I really love Monster Hunter World. It has become one of my most favourite games of all time and it is one of the only two games I look forward to playing when I get back from work, the other being Overwatch. Now this video will not be a full on review because I've only recently ventured into Monster Hunter so I don't think I can do it justice. At the same time, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of reviewers out there who have already said what I'm going to say. So instead, this video is just going to be about my journey of how I turned from a casual Monster Hunter player into a full-fledged full-time hunter of the Research Commission 5th Fleet. In the past, I have people asking me, Hey Dempster, do you play Monster Hunter? And my answer will be a straight no. My reason at the time? Because I don't like taking 9 hours just to drink a potion. It's a stupid reason, but one that's not too far off. Sure, it did contribute, but the truth is way deeper than that. See, the first time I actually started becoming a hunter was on Monster Hunter Freedom Unite for the PSP. I was 21 at the time and serving my 2 years full-time national service and the only thing I could do to keep myself sane in camp was playing games. My first experience with the game was, unfortunately, not a very good one. I feel that Monster Hunter is the kind of game that is more fun when you play with friends, sharing a common goal of hunting the monster down and using its parts to make even stronger armour. For 21 year old me however, I didn't have anyone to play the game with. All in all, playing the game by yourself with no knowledge about it whatsoever was the reason why I shied away from the game for many years to come. Fast forward to 2016, the year Monster Hunter Generations came out. People around me like Leon, Cap, Jasmine, JJ and Brian were so hyped about the game, while well, all I muttered was a simple, oh, okay. I didn't really want to try out the game at first because of how little I knew about the game as well as the fear of reliving my past as a lonely guy sitting in the corner playing games by myself. I gave the same stupid reason of taking 9 hours just to drink one potion while hiding the truth away, but eventually, I got convinced by Leon and Cap to get back into it. The decision I made of buying the game after that was one that would completely change my view about Monster Hunter. Suddenly, it became fun again, and I loved it. When joining various quests with the rest of CVGS, I learned so much about Monster Hunter that I never thought I could before. The game simply blew me away with its beautiful aesthetics, awkward but tight controls, and music that would pull my heartstrings from time to time in a good way. In fact, what you've been listening to throughout the whole video are some of my absolute favourites from Monster Hunter Generations. Anyway, like I said before, I lacked severely in experience when compared to the rest, but what I lacked in experience, I more than made up for it with my ability to learn very, very fast. Eventually, I got good enough to be able to take down some monsters on my own, a feat I thought I could never do 8 years ago. Now, there's a common inside joke we had where if you're constantly getting our butts kicked by a monster for whatever reason, they will become our best friends. Funnily enough, mine happened to be Glavinus. I remember having a lot of trouble taking it down and I would always die to it at least once every hunt. It was frustrating but not to the point of rich quit. Thanks to the help of the others, we took it down together and I soon found myself walking around the gathering hub, clad in an armor set reminiscent of its shenanigans. Two years later, Monster Hunter World was announced and eventually released. Needless to say, our hype for the game was off the charts, but what ultimately got me sold were two things. First, you can use the right analog stick to control the camera. Sure, this is a norm since the first Monster Hunter game was capable of that, but when you start out with the portable versions, this is a huge deal to me. But of course, nothing can beat the next point. You can move while drinking potions. As a joke, that sealed the deal for me immediately. But that aside, it was a subtle and great mechanic that would be very helpful to both new and returning players alike. I now have no more reason to diss Monster Hunter for this, and I got the game as soon as it came out. The controls are even more intuitive now, the graphics and music are amazing, and I found myself learning even more about the game and the mechanics. I found a new best friend in Anjanath, but it evolved into a love-hate relationship where we have a fair share of taking each other down. When I was playing Monster Hunter Generations, I picked the dual blades as my starting weapon because of how fast it can deal damage in a short span of time. My only issue with it was that I had to be super close to the monster in order to unleash its full potential, something that would put me at great risk of taking hits that can end the quest immediately. I thought I could be able to do the same thing in Monster Hunter World, and boy was I so wrong. For some reason, I did worse with dual blades there. 
Even a monster as easy as Anjanath could kick my butt without breaking a sweat. Soon after, I decided to retire the dual blades for a while and went to my secondary preferred weapon, Insect Glaive. The Insect Glaive quickly became my favourite weapon and one I would call my main, being able to fly all over the place and dealing quick blows to the monster, mounting it in the process. On a side note, this is very similar to my playstyle of Junkrat in Overwatch, where I could fly around with the concussion mines and making short work of my enemies. I could go on and on about Monster Hunter World, but that would just make me sound like a broken record. At the end of the day, Monster Hunter World defines what I now love about this series. The controls are a lot more fluid, the process of learning a monster's pattern and using them to an advantage pays off greatly, and there are so many things to do in the game that doesn't feel stale and repetitive. The difficulty curve isn't too steep either, as you're slowly introduced to monsters of increasing difficulty, each with their own set patterns and behaviours that you will accumulate with each successful hunt. The game makes sure that you evolve not with the equipment you'll get, but more of your personal skills and your experience as a hunter. Monster Hunter World gets a solid 9 out of 10 from me. Play it, you will not be disappointed. Thank you all very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my journey on how I became a full-fledged hunter. Uh, if you like this video, please give a like and subscribe to us for more CVGS content. And of course, ring the bell at the side so you'll always get notified of all of our updates, be it scheduled or impromptu. At the same time, follow us on our socials, join us on Discord, and support us on Patreon if you want to see more and want to support the show directly. That's it. Thank you all very much for watching. Remember to have fun playing Monster Hunter World, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!